want to know what the elves used to be like? Stick around and I'll tell you. As you may know, I am the mythical artist based in the Norwegian mountains. A lot of my art is inspired by mythology and folklore, so I thought I'd make a series and dive into that. And this is the first one. Today we're taking a look at the elves, especially through the Scandinavian eyes and what they were like before Christianity, before Romanticism and before Disney. So you might learn some things that you haven't heard before. I hope you'll enjoy it. I have a long list of creatures to talk about but feel free to add to the list in the comments. Even though the tales of the elves have spread worldwide thanks to books and movies, they're a Northern European phenomenon. The earliest known reference to elves that still exists comes from Norse mythology. In Old Norse, the elves were called Alvar. In today's Norwegian, they're called Alvar, not too far off. Most Germanic languages have similar words for them. The word Alvar comes from the Proto-Germanic Albir or Albal a variation which gave the Norse Alfred, which in turn was the source for the Anglo-Saxon Oaf and Elf. Some speculate that the origin of the Proto-Germanic word is Indo-European albo meaning white. Elves seem to have been very popular among the ancient, judging by the many names that relate to Alf or Elf. The term has been preserved and carried on in names like Alf and Alv, Alfild, Alvar or Halvar. Alf was a particularly popular part of Anglo-Saxon names like Elfred, which means Elf Council. The modern name is Alfred, Elfwin, which means Elf Friend, which is now Alvin, Elfric, Elf Ruler which is Eldridge, and also in female names like Elfled, Elf Beauty. They're often mentioned alongside the gods, and usually as lesser spirits of nature. They've been known to aid both men and gods when they feel like it. In Kormak Saga, there's a description of the fighter Turvad sustaining a wound which won't heal, and his wife suggesting that he smears blood on a stone under which the elves live. Elves were connected to mystery and magic, as they still are, and had a terrible temper if offended. They were powerful beings who ought to be respected. If you didn't, you'd live to regret it. In Norse lore, interbreeding between the Alpha and humans was possible and did happen. For example, the hero Hogne was the son of a queen and her elven lover. Elves are mentioned in Heimskringla and in the saga of Thorstein Vikingsson, a tale of a family of local kings who ruled over Alfheim. The poem Austfaravisur by Sigvat Thorsson, written around 1020, speaks of a Christian who was refused entry into a heathen Swedish home because they were celebrating Alvablut. What this blue meant is uncertain because there are no descriptions of it, but it's generally assumed to be connected to the ancestral cult. In a couple of sagas, men with high status got the name Alf after death. That's one reason why there have been speculations of an ancestral cult related to the elves. It's been speculated that the Desir would be the female ancestral spirits and the elf are the male. In the Edda, Snorri makes the distinction between light elves, dark elves, and black elves. The light elves are supposedly fair to look upon and they live in Alfheim. Alfheim was given to the god Freyr as a gift for his first tooth as a baby, and some see Freyr as the ruler of the elves. In Alismol, the elves are seen as separate from the Vanir and the Aesir. The dark elves live in the dark and are more mischievous. Later in the same book, Svartalfheim and Black Elves are mentioned in a way which makes it probable that Snorri is talking about dwarves. The division of the elves 
may come from the Christian notion of good and evil. We have to remember that Snorri was a Christian man describing a previous culture. His views did affect what he wrote about and how he described it. The elves of Norse mythology are usually considered to be the height of humans or just above and they were thought to be long-lived or immortal. 19th century romanticism attempted to restore them to full stature, making them men and women of great beauty, often depicted as very young. They were depicted as very beautiful young men and women in drawings and paintings. From this, the elves entered the 20th century as a literary fantasy genre in the backwaters of J.R.R. Tolkien's publications, especially the posthumously published Silmarillion. The decline of the elves started with the introduction of the Christian faith, and by the 16th century their popularity dwindled to having a status as a tiny, malicious, sometimes evil spirit, thought to be in league with or as bad as the devil and his flock. When you read about elves in stories from the later Christian period, you hear about elves being seen at night dancing over meadows and marshes, and the circles they left behind are still to this day called elf dances in Swedish. We now know them to be caused by a fungus, but back then they didn't know this. If a human stopped and watched the elves dancing, he would find that even though only a few hours have apparently passed, it has actually been many years in the real world. You also find stories of people being pulled into the hills where the elves lived and kept as slaves of an elf queen or princess luring men to her to have sex slaves. When people found Neolithic flint arrowheads in the past, they were called elf shots. They were imagined to have been created and used by the elves, and sudden paralysis was sometimes attributed to elf stroke. If one offended the elves, this was a possible payback. In early modern folklore, as well as fairy tales and movies, they've become associated with the fairies of romanticism folklore and have a relatively small size, often living mainly in forests but also underground in hills and rocks or in wells and springs. In some stories, like The Elves and the Shoemaker or The Elves and the Cobbler by the Grimm brothers, the elves decide to help a human succeed, so they're not just pretty or evil in fairy tales. In Scandinavia, the elves are separate from the whites, even if the boundaries are a bit blurry. The fairies with insect wings in British folklore are sometimes called elvud in modern Swedish, alver in Norwegian, and the same in Danish, but the correct translation would be fair, which is fairies. Elves and fairies are different creatures. The legends of the elves, the Nissa and the Hildur, have been so popular in northern Europe that they're still alive. This is most noticeable around Yule, which is what we call Christmas. The Icelanders either believe in or don't want to deny the possibility that elves exist. Some of this is maintained due to tourism, but many Icelandic people truly believe in the Huldefolk, which are elves living in mountains, hills and rocks. Roads have been diverted and planned houses moved because of this. In the USA, Canada, Great Britain and Ireland, modern fairy tales and stories for children about Santa Claus also include little elves. They're dressed in tight-fitting green clothes, have pointy ears, sometimes long noses and pointy hats, and are said to be Santa's helpers or workers. They make toys in a factory located at the North Pole. This version of small but handy Christmas elves has commercialized the modern perception of elves side by side with the elves in fantasy literature. The elves have visually become small children who never age and thereby don't reproduce either, with the exception of the Tolkien version. The Christmas elves of contemporary popular culture were popularized during the 1870s in the United States in publications such as Godey's Ladies Book. In recent years, it's become popular to put up elf or fairy doors and houses in the woods. I love this. There's also all the people cosplaying as elves and the elf on the shelf doing mischief at Christmas 
I think it's good to see mythology and folklore making a return to the minds of people and media, even if they differ a bit from the earlier descriptions. That's all I had for my summary for the elves. Do you believe in elves or fairies? What do you think they're like? Connect with me in the comments. I thought I'd mention that I'm having a sale on original art tomorrow, March 14th, which is my birthday. You will get quite a discount to keep an eye on my social media. I will post about it when I have everything ready. You'll find the links in the description below. This is the best opportunity you'll get to grab an original for a long time. Browse around and grab the ones that speak to you. If you're curious about the art in the video, all the artworks are listed in the description. Thanks for watching this video about the elves. I hope you learned something new and something exciting. If you liked it, please like it, share it with your friends, hit subscribe if you haven't already. There will be more videos in this series, so stick around. It'll be worth it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.